Welcome to this week's episode of What's Up Weekly, where we bring you the latest news in 10 minutes or less. I'm Brittany Bradley. And I'm Margo Andrews. Like always, we're here to keep you up to date and informed with news on campus and around the world. Let's start off in the TV world this time, XOXO Gossip Girl, the famous signature line of the hit TV show and books based on a group of Upper East Side teenagers. That has been the closing of all drama in Blair, Serena, Chuck, and Nate's lives these past five years, but this week we finally found out who is behind that famous voice. The show revealed the gossip blogger to be Georgina Sparks, the girl who has wrecked havoc in Manhattan season after season. Now that we know who's behind the popular blog, what's next for the Upper East Siders? The show's producer says it's time to go in a new direction. He couldn't reveal any details, but did say Georgina's role on Gossip Girl will be very different than anything she has ever played before. Huh, you know, I kind of fell off the wagon for that show around the end of season two, and yeah. I have no idea what's going on now. I kind of did too, but I read all the books, so I still, I'm still a fan of her. the books really follow the show? Not and at vice all. Versa? Yeah, so not you're right on, you're, you know what's happening. Yeah, but there's some inside information for you. <laughs> well, here's something that is not such a surprise. The Super Bowl is coming up. And before kickoff, one on and off the radar celeb will be taking the stage to sing the national anthem. Kelly Clarkson was confirmed by the NFL Tuesday as a star that will honor America in front of millions of viewers. Clarkson, of course, got her start as the first winner of American Idol. But wait, there's more. Blake Shelton and his wife Miranda Lambert will also take the stage and sing America the Beautiful before the game, while Lenny Kravitz and the Fray will be providing some additional pregame entertainment. And as most of us know by now, Madonna will perform during the halftime show, which is rumored to feature IU's very own drumline, in addition to reports of Nicki Minaj, LMFAO, and CeeLo Green. I don't know, but Nicki could be just as risky as Janet Jackson. Yeah, that whole... Yeah, I don't thing. know about that. <laughs> well, from celebrity scandals to celebrity hookups, Elisabetta Canales has moved on in the dating game. The former Dancing with the Stars cast member has been spotted locking lips with the ultimate practical jokester, Steve-O. The two were seen kissing outside an apartment building in Los Angeles this week. I definitely did not see this one coming. Elisabetta is known for her former relationship with George Clooney, so I can't help but question what made her go from the ultimate GQ star to Steve-O, but an inside source says Elisabetta likes him because he makes her laugh, which we can't deny he's funny. Maybe the age is a weird thing, too. Maybe. I don't know, but best of luck to the new lovebirds, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, that actually, that relationship has some concrete evidence. However, our next story seems a little vague in the details. One of the newest housewives to grace Bravo TV, Brandi Glanville, was slammed by Gerard Butler after she claimed that he was the most famous person she had a fling with. Glanville rated Mr. Butler an 11 out of 10 for his bedroom skills when she appeared on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. And Butler, in return, commented to TMZ, who is Brandi Glanville? Glanville claims Gerard Butler called her the, the night before the comments were released and, and told her that he wanted their affair to remain private. Yeah, right. Sounds fishy to me, especially after Glanville's husband, Eddie Cibrian, left her for a more well-known Hollywood item, country star Leanne Rimes. But hey, you never know for sure in Tinseltown. I everyone mean, gets with everyone. Yeah, I kind of doubt that, though, let's be honest. So, I mean, her claim to fame is that her husband cheated on her, so I'm thinking Gerard she probably... actually She actually modeled for, like, oh. runway and catalog. Yeah, well, that doesn't really make her more of any interest to me, I guess. But... <laughs> Which kind of brings me to our next story, men can't resist an accent, and this was proven true through a survey where men voted Sofia Vergara the most desirable woman of 2012. The Modern Family actress was most noted for her famous curves, but I'm sure her beautiful looks helped as well. Other celebrities who made the list were Emma Stone, Scarlett Johansson, and Kim Kardashian, of course. Can't have a story about the Kardashians. They're boring, though, like in real life. <laughs> the big surprises on the list, however, were the two stars missing from it. A-listers such as Jennifer Aniston and Angelina Jolie failed to earn a spot this year in the rankings. I think it's those younger women kicking those I guess two so. out. Oh, yeah, they're getting know? too old. Getting but well. those two names you just dropped at the end have a perfect swing for my next story. Thank you're, you very much. You're welcome. Well, here's a twist on a political update for you. Potential GOP candidate Newt Gingrich said if a movie is made about his life, that none other than Brad Pitt should have the starring role. Newt made the comment during a phone interview to the Rich Stevens radio show. He also made it clear that Brad is thinner, better looking, younger, and the two look absolutely nothing alike. Can't deny that. <laughs> Newt also made it known that Brad was his fantasy movie star, and why not go for it and let your imagination soar? Did you get my whole spin off there with the Brad Pitt, yeah. Angelina Jolie, Jen Aniston kind of thing? Yeah, I think everyone got it. But to be honest, I think it's a little bit of a stretch. I don't know. But of course, you found a way to throw a polit politician story in there. Yeah, and I've uh, got some more. Yay! Since I started my political kick, I'll throw in another one. Mitt Romney left the Florida GOP primary as top dog, making his victory the biggest to date in the GOP contest. With this win, Romney is now the only Republican candidate to have won two primaries. Romney's competition is saying, not so fast. Newt Gingrich commented saying the race is nowhere near even close to over, stating that it has several months left and will probably finish in June or July, unless Mr. Romney drops out. 
Florida's primary is the most valuable so far in terms of its 50 delegates. Romney now has 87 national delegates compared to Newt's 26. But there's still a long way to go for anyone in the GOP competition to get the needed 1,144 delegates to officially seal the Republican nomination. We need to be careful because I think people might actually start learning something from our show if we keep having stories like yeah, that. Right, they hear political and they're like scanning with their internet browser to find the next story. Exactly. <laughs> well, something I'm sure no one can miss, a story about McDonald's. McDonald's is known for their I'm loving it slogan, but I'm pretty sure you won't be a fan of this next story. McDonald's has confirmed they will no longer be using pink gooey slime in their hamburgers. Yes, this was an active ingredient. The slime is actually ammonium hydroxide, which is an ingredient in fertilizers and household cleaners. While the U.S. Agriculture Department classified this ingredient as safe, many petitions have been made against McDonald's to stop using this in their meat. The fast food chain commented that the change to the recipe has nothing to do with the petitions, but is rather focused on their efforts to align global beef, raw material standards. Nonetheless, after seeing pictures of this, I'm glad it will no longer be served in their hamburgers. It's kind of hey, gross. I still like all their food. I do too. And Except last the night, fish fillet. That's like... Yeah, that's gross. But last <laughs> night we tried those new like popcorn chicken things. Yeah. Those are pretty good there. Really? Yeah. I'm going to have to swing by and check those out later. <laughs> Popularity contests are such a high school thing, right? Wrong. U.S. News & World Report puts out rankings of the most popular national universities in America among applicants, and the results are in. The list is determined by looking at the percentage of students accepted to a school who opt to attend. Filling the number one spot is Harvard University, with 75.5% of the students accepted in 2010 enrolled in the school, which is why the prestigious university is listed as the most popular. Brigham Young was a close second with a 74.7% acceptance rate. Also landing a spot on the list were University of Nebraska, Georgia Southern University, and the Massachusetts Institution of Technology. All right, I think you slipped up and forgot IU, but I'll let that slide. And on purpose, I didn't make the list. Oh, well, no. Whatever. Anyway, did you ever see that movie about the MIT kids, you know, doing the card yes, counting stuff? Yes, I loved it. Uh, 21, right? Yeah, super good, good movie. movie. <laughs> you can learn a lot from that. We can become very rich from trying their, their <laughs> skills. And illegal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Where is your brain today? You're literally adding few to no intelligent comments. You're the one stories. that wants to do illegal activity, like after I know, class. Sorry, we should put that on TV. Be a private thing. Well, if you really think I'm adding um, like few intelligent comments, you're going to be really happy with this <laughs> next story because I'm ending on a super intelligent high note. Khloe Kardashian is back on the airwaves. She kicked off her new Dallas-based radio show on Monday. Chloe isn't a stranger to radio. She hosted Chloe After Dark back in Miami from 2009 to 2010. Her first hour-long show included an interview with Kyle Richards of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Ms. Richards discussed her book and the first round of reunion episodes for her own reality show. Chloe is now residing in Dallas because her husband Lamar was traded back to the Mavericks back in December. They will also be starring in another season of their spin-off, Chloe and Ramon Lamar, from D their Dallas location. We almost just tried to fool them right there. We didn't have a story about the Kardashians until the very end. I know, they got the number 10 spot. It's crazy. Most people don't watch the whole show, so we'll probably <laughs> miss it anyway. Well, that wraps up this week's episode of What's Up Weekly. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at What's Up Weekly IU. Have a great week.